starting point of a program. A process. Most likely, the, pro the first process is to get inputs from the user. Get input from the user and must store A a variable. Then you test it. Now, the process at test is differentiated from a normal process by instead using a diamond shape. It is still a process, but this process is special because it tests for a condition, whether it is true or false. In previous lecture, we have learned about expression, especially Boolean expression that leads to the result of true or false. Yeah. Uh, for example, how do you know that an integer is positive? How do you tell that an integer is positive? Greater than zero, correct. So suppose that, suppose that the first step is to get integer x from the keyboard. So to test whether it's a positive number, we will see that, we will use the expression whether x is greater than zero or not. Right? So this will lead to two possible outcomes, true or false. So if it's true, then you will display that x is a positive integer. Display x is positive. If it is false, then probably in your program you can choose to do nothing all right you can choose to do nothing now this is a simple if statement this is what we call a simple if statement Because it only tests whether the condition is true so that it can execute one process if it is true. One or more process if it is true. If it is false, if it is false, it ignores. A simple if statement, if it is false, it ignores that one special process. Correct? So the main thing that you're looking for is if it is true, then you'll be executing a process. If it's not true, you skip. All right. Another variation is if else statement. So suppose that the question now I change it to that. Determine how do you tell that <coughs> x, how do you tell that an integer is positive <coughs> or negative? <coughs> How do you tell if an integer is positive or negative? Yeah? Um, sorry, how do you tell an integer is positive or not positive? Let's put it that way. want to determine whether it's positive or not. That's it. Positive or nothing. Right? <coughs> Whereas the second question is asking you to determine whether it's positive or non-positive. So there are two types that you want to determine here. Right? So, 
in such a decision control structure, it may look like this. Get integer x. Test whether the number is bigger, is greater than 0 or not. If it's greater, then <coughs> display positive. If it is not, display non positive. So there's a branch here. There is a branch here. So this kind of decision is called if else statement. Because there are two possible outcomes. The first outcome, if it is true, display positive. The second outcome, if it is false, is to display non-positive. Now, by the way, if you recall, the flowchart notation for display and input will be parallelogram, right? We call it parallelogram. This is a parallel uh, rectangle. So I encourage you to use the correct notation, yeah? practice to use the correct notation yeah because there may be one or two marks given for correct notation even though it's not a lot of marks but it's two marks so now please please note the difference between if statement and if else statement in if statement you do or skip in if else statement you have two options do this or do that all right now, may I proceed with the third type? If, else, if. Now, suppose that now I change the question to sound like this. How do you tell if an integer is positive? Negative or a zero. So there are three possibilities here, so here, right? For decision structure, you only do these two outputs. But here we are having a situation where we have more than two. In this case, three only. Positive, negative, or zero. So such a situation, such a problem requires if, else, if uh, decision. So of course, first you need to get the input. Then you evaluate. Is x greater than zero? If true, display that x is positive. Now, here, the situation is like this. If false, you repeat the test. If false, you repeat the test. So when you repeat the test, you have another argument. Is x equal to 0? Yes. Display. 0. Now, if still false, right, then uh, for sure it is already a negative, right? Yeah. 
Now, how how is this if else if different from if else? If else, you only has two you only have two possible outputs. Choose one of it. End of story. But in if else if, you have two possible outputs. Sorry, more than two possible outputs. If true, you produce the result. End of story. If false, you test the gate. Until it becomes true or none is left. So that's the difference. So you can keep testing. Now, can I test 10 conditions? Is it possible to test 10 conditions? Yes. yes. I simply I simply chain another. I simply chain another. <coughs> Uh, diamond to it, whereby if true, do this, if false, test again, right? So I simply change. So if we continue, if else, if else, if else, if else, if else, if else, infinite, right? Now, uh, this flowchart is not yet completed. Why? Because after the output, it must eventually come to the end, right? So, after you test successfully, once one time successful test, you end the testing already. Yeah? So, where does the error go to? After display negative, right? After the whole test. So, imagine this scenario. Imagine one day you become a parent and you have a toddler of four years old. Your toddler wakes up and asks, Can I have pizza? If you say yes, okay, I know, sorry. She stops asking, right? She stops asking. But you say, No, pizza no good. Then she say, Can I have chocolate? You want to keep her quiet? Say yes. If you say no, then she asks, Can I have candy? You say no, then she say, can I have cereal? Yes, end of story. So that is an example of nested E. Nested E, yeah? Uh, no. An example of is if else, an analogy of if else is, you are in a restaurant, suddenly you have the urge. You are in a restaurant, you have the urge. So you go to the washroom, right? So you look at the doors. Male, female. You have only two to choose from, right? And you have to choose one of them. Only two objects, right? It helps. Yeah? Now, suppose... Uh, suppose you come to a toilet, uh, you come to a washroom in the middle of nowhere, only one washroom, and the washroom says, pay 100 bucks. So you have a decision to make, to use or not to use, right? Yes. So is it if else, if else if or if? If. It's just whether you use or don't use, that's all, right? So if you are willing to pay 100 bucks, use it. If not, forget about it. That's if statement. Right? Does that analogy help you to remember? Yes. 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 Yes.